Hello everyone, Neil Tappin here from Golf Monthly. I hope you are well and staying safe. Uh, in this video, we have a chat with Lee Westwood. Now, Lee has played his whole professional career using Ping golf clubs. He's only ever used Ping, he's only ever been sponsored by Ping. So we contacted them to ask if we could get some time with Lee to talk about the relationship and to talk about some of the old golf clubs that Lee has played throughout his time out on tour. So what follows is a really fascinating trip down memory lane, looking at some of the old golf clubs that he's used, some of the old favourites, right through to what he's got in the bag. Currently, Lee also talks a bit about the process of putting new golf clubs into play, what's um, involved in that. Uh, and he also goes through some of the key technological advancements that have been made in golf clubs over the year, years and how that's affected him and how that's affected the professional game uh, more generally, which is really fascinating. And he also talks us through his gold putter collection, which is definitely not to be missed. Uh, right, that's enough from me. Let's speak to Lee. Okay, hi Lee. Uh, thanks for joining hi. us. Um, how's lockdown going in your house? Um, all right, really. Um, you know, we're all adhering to the rules and uh, not going out and um, trying to find things to do. Um, a lot of jigsaws being played, a lot of peloton being done. I've just done nearly an hour on the peloton, so I've been doing some weight training just to really be, you know, in shape for if and when the uh, season starts up again. You don't, we, you know, they're, they're putting tournaments in, aren't they, from August onwards already? But do we know if this is all going to be over by then? We hope so, but you never know, do you? You never know. And what are you doing from a kind of specifically from a golf perspective? Are you just doing lots of chipping in the back garden or is it anything more than that? I'm not doing lots of anything. I've hit a few chips and made a few swings with a heavy club, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't practice that much anyway, really. Okay. Uh, when I've got my time off. And the last couple of years, um, I've not played much between the desert swing and kind of the middle of the year, May, June time. Anyway, I've played a couple of World Golf Championships in a Houston, Houston Oak, Shell Houston Oak. But other than that, you know, I've only played two or three tournaments in the space of 16 weeks the last two or three years. So this is not that big a change in my schedule, really. No. Okay. So very kindly, it was the guys at Ping that have... Um, have arranged this for us. So I want to talk about equipment through the through the ages, as it were. So right, if you look back, right from the beginning, Lee, what, what were the early golf clubs you remember using when you first started out playing? Well, my first ever set of clubs weren't ping. Um, obviously, I think like uh, um, most 11, 12 year olds, I was, I was bought a set um, by my uh, nan and granddad. Uh, from a guy that my mum used to work with. It was a half set of uh, Carrie Middlecoff, I think they were, maybe ladies' clubs. I can't even remember. They were a bit rusty, and I just took them down on the field, you know, and, and had, a, had a hack with them, really. Uh, and then from there, I um, got a set of Swilking, Swilking Cavity Back ladies' clubs. Uh, tried to keep them nice and light. And then, and then I got, and then my mum and dad bought me a set of uh, pings. Um, when I was sort of 13 years of age, um, played played well with them, uh, won the county championship, and then um, Ping very kindly started lending me clubs. So uh, you know, I've been with Ping since about 87, 1987. Yeah, it's definitely one of the the longest kind of player brand relationships in the game, isn't it? What what yeah. how did that how did it sort of start? I mean, how did Ping? I guess they've got people on the ground who are watching out for up and coming players, and they're, they're, how did it sort of all develop? Excuse me. Yeah, and I was a bit a bit of an advantage living in workshop with the Ping Factory in Gainsborough. You know, it's only 20, 25 minutes away from workshop. So um, the pro at workshop golf club, Don King, um, he stocked a lot of Ping equipment. So I think the, the local rep sort of been chatting to John and saying, I see you've got a good uh, junior golfer here. And, uh, and he said, yeah. And then we sort of got in contact with each other and they took me down to the fitting centre at Ping. Uh, I got fitted there. Okay. Uh, and from those early years, I guess the, the, the sort of the formative years, you were starting to get noticed, develop through the system, get onto the kind of national teams and then turning pro. What are the, can you remember any specific models of clubs that you 
remember fondly during that period? Um, I used the, I would have been using the Ping I twos back then, um, and I used those for oh, a good few years, um, steel ones, and then I was given a set of beryllium copper ones. Um, everybody wanted beryllium to spin the ball more, you know, with that box grew. I used to spin it off the greens. <laughs> it was never a great idea. Um, and and then they changed the rules on the grooves. And but I still had a set of beryllium coppers. And um, I went to the tour school with those and qualified at the tour school with that set. Uh, I think I played with Ping I two beryllium coppers in the first tournament on the tour. And then they brought out the Zing twos, which I used for for many a year. I must have used the Zing twos. Whew, right through until you know probably winning the money list in 2000 i reckon i reckon i was the zing twos for seven seven or eight years yeah were, were ping not trying to get a new set of irons in in your hands at that point i think i was winning sort of seven or eight tournaments a year so they, they thought better leave him as he is <laughs> um what what just and then what sort of involvement do you have in the the clubs that Ping bring out to market. Are you, are you kind of somebody that's kind of involved in helping them to tweak designs, adding bits and bobs over here, taking things away? Is there what's the sort of relationship on that part of the side of things? No, I've uh, I've always just trusted them, and they've kind of gone there. Lee, there's a new driver. You know, we spec it up to you. See how it goes. If it goes well, if it goes as good, or if not better than the one. Uh, the one I'm using, then I put it in. If it's not as good, then they're happy for me to use, you know, the ones that I used the, the G10 for many a year, um, you know, when they were bringing out the other ones after that. So, uh, obviously, I think they'd like me to use the most current ones, and I do use the most current one at the moment because it's easily the best driver I've ever used. But, uh, you know, they first and foremost, they want me to play well. How, how do you treat that process of putting new equipment into play? Because, obviously... I presume there is a, a degree of pressure to kind of put the new stuff into play. But then I guess the onus is on them to show an improvement. So how, how does it work, actually going through the process of getting new stuff in play? Trial and error, really. You know, I'll use it away from tournament play, give it a go there, then maybe use it in practice rounds. Uh, and then the time comes when, um, you know, it's time to use it under the gun, really, on the golf course. Have you ever thought about putting any of the really old stuff back into play ever had a time where you i don't know maybe not hitting it quite as well and thought i'll give this a go again no i mean as good as modern technology is now you'd be giving up too much to i used a wooden driver the, a couple of weeks back we went out and just had a bit of a fun game and i thought i'll take that wooden driver out because it's the garage out and uh i hit it flush out of the middle and i was playing with my son and uh he, he had a high sky that went past where I did this flush with a wooden driver. So, uh, yeah, I mean, technology really is a, a big advantage nowadays. You've got such a, a massive sweet spot compared to, you know, they used to say, oh, he did that one out of the screws. I mean, this, that was like when you caught one right out the middle of the club face because there were screws in the, in the club face. And now, I mean, the surface area of a face that where the, 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 the screws must, must be is massive. Well, of the, the big equipment, of the big technological improvements that have, have come into play, which one do you think, whether it's, I don't know, larger headed drivers or more forgiveness in the irons, whatever it is, what, what do you think has made the biggest difference to your game? To my game or to everybody's game in general? Okay. Uh, I, think, I think the ball and the driver has made the most significant difference to, to everybody's game. But I don't think it's made as big a difference to my game as uh, as other people's games. I think um, it's been unfortunate that driver technology has come on so well that um, people who were a great driver of the golf ball with the old equipment are now at a disadvantage because then you know everybody's a great driver now. You've got such a, a big sweet spot that you don't have to take out the middle anymore. You, sometimes it goes further out, you know, high out the toe than it does out the middle. So. Uh, you know that that is, that is you know one of my bugbears. People that were great putters years ago are still great putters now, and there's not really been that much improvement in putter technology. You know, significant improvement that you can see. Um, it's changed a little bit, and but the, but the ball and the driver has made a massive improvement. 
when the guys from Ping come to you with new designs and ideas or stuff that you might want to put into play, how sort of open-minded are you about putting something a bit different in? Are you are you quite willing to give it a chance and give it a go? Or do you kind of know you like what you like and you like to stick with what, what it is? No, I'm pretty open to trying different things. You know, if, if there's... Uh... I think first and foremost, you have to like like it visually. If you're looking down at something and you don't like the look of it, then you know it's tough to make a change. But if you put something down and it looks good, uh, you know that's you're halfway there, really. Um, and then with me, say it's a driver, it's just a case of matching the shaft with the loft and you know how the club head performs and getting the weighting right in the head. And then you know I'm kind of off and running then. It, but I, I think you know we've been sort of a bit older than most of the lads out here, sort of old school. If I, I, I would determine how a club goes from, you know, how it feels and how the flight looks on the golf course and whether it's, you know, I'm getting some run out of it and whether I can move it around left to right, right to left, uh, rather than the lads that stand on the range and look at track man figures. And I still do that, but I, I work a lot more on ball flight. Okay, yeah, because that's because that's more realistic to what you're trying to do on the golf course. Yeah, I mean, it's no good standing on a range and the trackman figures being all brilliant and then getting on the first tee and, it, you know, not knowing which side of the golf course to aim. You know, our golf, our golf club performs on the on the golf course. It's completely different to how it performs on the range when you're not having to aim down a fairway and hit a fairway. Um, and, Lee, what, what's your favourite club that you've got in the bag currently? Not really our favourites, to be honest. <laughs> Not one that you just think uh, that will that will be difficult for them to replace. <laughs> yeah, I mean the driver that I've got at the moment, I love. You know, I, uh, you know that's matched really well. But you know, I've got two or three that are very similar to that. And you know, if you were to put them in my hand and, and you know me do a blind test, I wouldn't be able to pick out which one it was without sort of going on the golf course and seeing you know which one. Maybe it's only two or three yards in it. But the but the putter I've had in for a while, um, uh, I've chopped and changed my irons because airlines were having getting into a habit of losing them. Uh, my clubs on the way to tournaments, so I've had to have new new sets of irons made. Uh, so I've got about three sets of irons on the go at the moment. I change my wedges regularly. Probably change my lob wedge four or five times a year just to keep the grooves fresh. Uh, I'm just breaking in another lob wedge now. Um, I tend to use them for like two or three weeks and then start to make a new lob wedge. You know, I keep them about six weeks. After three weeks, I start breaking in another one. Um, and what advice would you offer those of us who are thinking about going to get fitted? What, what's, what, what sort of advice from somebody who's kind of just put new golf clubs into place so often over the years, albeit with one brand? What's a good piece of advice for people to have in mind when they're getting new clubs put in? Well... I mean, a, a lot of people say to me, you know, why don't you use a blade? Well, I use a, I've always used a cavity bite, and a cavity bite kind of gives you more forgiveness. Um, so I've always believed that everybody needs as much forgiveness on the golf course as they can get. Everybody needs help. The shaft is vital when you're getting clubs uh, fitted. So you've got to go to a good, good club fitter that gets the right shaft for you, that performs well for that head. So, Lee, talk to us about the gold putters that you've got then. Um, it's something that Ping do when, <laughs> when a player... have got loads of them. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, explain, explain what it is that Ping do. So, um, when you win a tournament, we'll start with this one here. This was the first, um, this was the first put I actually bought this one. Oh, um, yeah. It's a Ping thing. Let's hold it close to the camera. It's a bit worn and shiny now. You can see how I wore, I wore the face down. And, um, and when you win... win uh, a tournament on the on any tour, uh, Ping make a, a gold putter exactly the same. So that is the Volvo. I, don't know if I can hold it close enough to the camera for you. Can you see that? Volvo Scandinavian Masters champion, 1996. Yeah, got it. So that's the one that replicates that one. And you know, for every win, um, I've got I've got a replica uh, of that. Um, you get them for playing in the Ryder Cup. You get them for career money wins. So, uh, let's see. I, I, that one's a, a PAL 4 from 
in the uh, Freeport McDermott Classic in New Orleans. My first week win in America. Okay. There, there, there was one. Uh, that's a an answer, um, and that was forty million dollars in career earnings. So <laughs> there is there is one here. Uh, if I can find it. So that was the first ever one I got for getting to a, a, like a milestone in money. That was one million dollars career earnings. Wow. So. That one there is now forty million dollars in career earnings, and I think they go up higher than that. I think I've got one for fifty million dollars, and I think they've sort of given up now. No, I've got to stay. <laughs> so you didn't get one for Abu Dhabi. I haven't got one for Abu Dhabi or uh, the Ned Bank yet. They're, they're, they're falling behind. I'll have to have a word with them. You're, you're costing them too um, much. <laughs> probably, yeah. So this is the uh, this is a ping derby that I used from about 97 till about ooh, past 2000. That, that must have won 20 to 25 tournaments, that one. Really, yeah. The Australian Open with that. Uh, I, I flitted around. I used, I used a derby with an insert there in 1998. Uh, that was the, that was the um, Lot Lomond. It's written in the back there. Oh, Probably okay. can't see it. So that was for winning in Lot Lomond. But like I said, this one, I, I, I won a lot with that. Toyed around with all, all different kinds of uh, zings at the start of my career. So I used a nickel one. That's a nickel one with the gold writing in the, in the back there. That's a beryllium copper one. But I don't play beryllium anymore because of the emissions it gives off. But right. they're all zing twos. They'll all be the same length, or pretty much, I think. That's the... Uh, Redwood? Ping... Redwood that I won the money list with in 2009. You can see I didn't even bother changing the grip. You can see it's all frayed. And I think once you get a grip that you like, you got to stick with it. You change your grip and it changes the way the ball feels. That's that. That is the Ned Bank, which is a copy of that Redwood that you just seen there. That's for winning the Ned Bank Challenge at Sun City in 2011. Beautiful. Wow. You can see that. Um, I flirted in 2003 with. Belly putter, so that's the belly putter. I won the uh, what does that say? Does that say okay. the Dunhill? Dunhill links, yeah. So I won the Dun Dunhill links with that, and I also won the uh, BMW International in Munich. That was when I'd gone through a slump, and they were the first two tournaments I won kind of on the comeback. Um, this one I just pulled out of the garage. This is this is uh, <laughs> this is weird. This is this has even got. I don't, I don't know whether it even went into manufacture. It's got prototype. I don't think you can see it on the bottom there. Oh yeah, prototype. I won the uh, Valroman Open de Andalusia in two thousand and seven with that. <laughs> is that a lower golf club? That's a strange looking thing. Is that the fun I've also, after you've used? I've, yeah, I've, I've used all sorts of different uh, styles styles of putters. That, that derby once again, like I said, in 2000, that was for winning the World Match Play Championship. That old beryllium copper that I won a oh, few yeah. times in Japan with. <laughs> oh, there we go. That's one of the early ones that I bought. I used to have a bit of a temper, so you can see the, the kick marks along the top of it, where we used to wear steel spikes. Yeah. And if I got frustrated, I'd kick the top of my putter like that and I'd put a mark in it, and wish I hadn't done it straight afterwards. So I used to have loads of loft on. That, that's probably got five degrees of loft on it, that. It is quite lofted. Yeah. Um, and then more more recently, uh, this is the one I'm using at the moment, the fancy head cover on it. Um, that's the that's the fetch. The fetch. It means yeah. you don't have to pick, pick the ball out of the hole yourself. You can pick the ball out of the hole when you've won, you see. It comes off quite soft, so um, with the greens being slow in Britain at the moment, with it just coming out of winter and being spring, I've been using I've been using this one this one, yeah. the uh, Hepler version, Hepler. yeah. Hepler, which has not got an insert in it, because um, that one I'm using's got a a, a rubber insert in it. You can see the see that one's got the rubber insert. That comes off nice and soft. That would have been great at Augusta this week. Uh, that one hasn't, so this one comes off a lot faster, which is a bit better on the slow greens, and I've, and I've had a bit more loft put on it as well, so it gets it in the air a little bit more when when the greens are just a little bit bumpy. So. Similar sort of grip, but they're the uh, they're the two most recent ones I've been using. So what, what, I do I do change photos a lot, as you know, 
the collection of gold putters dotted around the house made into lamps. <laughs> Cruise. There's one there. I'll just spin it around for you. So, so I, I had my Ryder Cup golf bags changed into lamps. And then <laughs> the, the lampshade's wonky because I've, I've pulled so many putters out. <laughs> yeah, let's put them back. Very good. What, what, um, what, what putts did you use growing up? It was that one there. The, uh, this the one. Derby. The Zing 2. The Zing two. No, no, they didn't make Derby back then. They only brought the Derby out in about the first week I got it. It was the Gene Sarazen World Open in, I think, in 1997. I finished second to Mark Kalkovecchia. That was the first week I used it. That's the first putter I. My mum and dad bought me that putter. So right. that putter's probably 33 years old. And you can see if you get the right angle of it, you can see a few spike marks in the face where, where I've kicked it just there, which I got. <laughs> Which I got told off for. <laughs> yeah. So you, didn't break first, but... you didn't break no, it. No, I, I, this is probably not the... Well, I think this probably is the original shaft. I, I, I can't ever remember breaking too many quarter shafts. Uh, so, so that begs the question, Lee. If you could only keep one golf club as a, as a piece of memorabilia for your career, what would you go for? You not, I'm not including the gold ones. Probably this one. You know, the first one I ever had, yeah. Yeah. It's probably one of the few clubs I've ever paid money for. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to finish with a slightly cheeky question. So feel free not to answer if you don't want to. But do you, do you think you could have maybe earned a little bit more money had you have moved to a different brand at some point during your career, Lee? Um, you never know. And, you know, as, as you know, professional players, you get offered, you know, all sorts of different contracts when... Uh, you know, you get to a certain level when you're world number one. Everybody wants to give you a set of golf clubs, want want you to play their equipment. But um, when you choose in a set of clubs, it, it's not really about the money because you could change a set of clubs and you could go out and you you know you know you, you might not play as well. So then, you know, you're not you're not giving yourself the best chance of winning. When you start off playing golf, you, you don't say, you don't stand there as a 15 year old kid and say, I want to earn a lot of money. You say, I want to win, I want to win golf tournaments and I want to win majors and I want to get to the be-, be the best player in the world and I want to play Ryder Cups. You don't ever mention money. And you know, a lot of people do make the mistake of changing uh, contracts. And you know, you see the game fall off because the equipment's not right for them. They've, they've kind of sold out for the cash and you know, that's the, been the great thing about working with Ping for 33 years. You know, we've got a, a good relationship. We're, we're loyal to each other. You know, they stuck with me when I had a slump. And, um, you know, I've stuck with them kind of all the way through because I like dealing with the people at, at Ping. You know, they're a family company and, uh, you know, we've got a good relationship there. And, you know, there aren't that many kinds of relationships in professional sport nowadays. It's, uh, it's a pretty mercenary players professional sport nowadays brilliant well thank you very much lee i really appreciate that that was great very interesting no problem so that's it thank you very much for watching um before you go please do uh, hit the pause button and leave a comment below have you used uh, ping golf clubs in the past have you got any old favorites if so please do leave some comments below would be really interested to hear what people have used and how it's helped them uh, play better golf over the years. Also, if you've enjoyed the video, please do hit that like button. And also, uh, don't forget to subscribe to Golf Monthly, subscribe to the channel, and, and make sure you hit that notification bell so you know whenever we post a video. Uh, but guys, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.